Hello everyone, this is George Cow. Welcome to the tr uh, Joyful Productivity uh, session. Actually, you know what, I need to start over. <laughs> I need to start over. Um, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to make sure that um, to attend, to watch, to watch this uh, session, click here now. Okay. Um, uh, right now, if you're on the um, Google Plus event page, the one with the boats, uh, go ahead and uh, look at the comment I just posted, which says to watch the session, click here now. And what happens is it'll bring you to a YouTube video screen, and uh, you're not you're going to see something different. But um, whoops, uh, on the right hand side, um, what what on the right hand side is a way to um, to post comments. So go ahead and do that if you don't mind. Uh, I would love to see your comments there. And what I'm going to do is uh, quickly close a bunch of my tabs. Um, let's see here. And then I'm going to start the event over. OK. OK, give me a second here. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. I just got off another call, and I should have planned better for this. So um, thank you for your wonderful patience. It's the first time, first time we're doing this here. OK. Um, oops. OK. All right, so let me actually start over. <laughs> OK, so let me take a deep breath. Oh, let me actually close the door. And by the way, the reason I, I like, I'd love for you to comment on the, um, the reason I'd love for you to comment on the, uh, the YouTube video um, on the right-hand side is because uh, the comments will be kept as part of the YouTube video in the future, and it actually helps to increase the search engine optimization of the video. Whereas, uh, and this is something you might not know, comments on Google Plus events, uh, right now Google Plus events is still very um, not search engine optimized. So, um, yeah, Google Google Plus events uh, pages are are not search engine optimized at all. So all the comments there don't help with that. So you can go ahead and comment. And I see um, uh, Tammy is there. Thank you, and Sharanagati, and um, uh, jo um, I think it's maybe Tim. I, I don't I know jo Jyoti Jyoti Jyotir maybe. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, so I am going to take a deep breath and get started. OK. Welcome, everyone, to the Joyful Productivity Coaching Program. So this is a four-week series where I'm going to be walking you through the most important principles that I know to create a work life, but also a personal life that is filled with both joy and accomplishment. And isn't that wonderful to be able to get the things done that you really want to do most in the world, to be able to get all the things done you most want to do in the world, and to do it with calmness, with confidence, and with joy. So here we go. And by the way, I'm going to give you the link to these slides um, uh, soon, those of you who are watching this live video don't have the, the exact link to the slideshow yet, but it will be, actually, you know what, um, you can probably go to joyfulpro.com, okay, it's not, it's not up yet, but uh, those, who, those who are watching a replay, you should be able to go, go to joyfulpro.com 
and find it. But those uh, watching the live video with me, sorry, the, the slideshow isn't available right now, but you'll have it in the future. You'll have it probably in the next couple days. Okay, so let's go on to uh, the second slide here. This is the simple map, the visual map that we're going to be walking through in the next four sessions, today included. Today we're going to cover awareness as the first principle. In the second session, we're going to cover simplicity and priorities. In the third session, we're going to, we're going to actually cover priorities and balance, because balance is actually a really big one. In the fourth session, we're going to cover balance and commitment. So we're going to go this way. And today we just have time to cover awareness, and that's really important. Let's go on to the next slide, and I want to uh, remind you, and do a little thing here. I want to remind you of the vision and the commitment of this program. Okay, now some of you are actually in the private coaching program that you know that I'm facilitating. Um, and some of you are uh, watching this video. You may have found it on YouTube or someone else told you about it. And if you're just kind of finding this video and getting the content, I encourage you to uh, do your own program. Uh, if, if you want to join ours, great. But if you, if you uh, can't join ours because financially or some other reason, please just get a couple of friends uh, with you who are interested in these topics and do the program just with your friends. I, what's most important for me is that this content, this, this, these videos are shared as far and wide as possible and as many people have their lives genuinely transformed for the better as possible. So that's my, that's my, um, that's my commitment in these, in these free videos. And the vision for the program itself is to have deeper joy and greater productivity in both your work life and in your uh, personal life. Okay? And the commitment, if you are either doing this with your friends or doing this in, uh, in a coaching program, is to follow through with this program. And how do you follow through? Simple. You watch all four sessions. Each session is just about half an hour long. It's half an hour to 45 minutes long. You, uh, oh, by the way, attend to or listen to the Q&A calls. This is, this is for the, those who are in the actual coaching program that I'm facilitating. But um, I also do monthly free uh, calls uh, that, that you're very welcome to attend and ask about Joyful Productivity. If you want to just attend my monthly free calls, you go to my website, georgecow.com. Okay, georgecow.com. Oh, actually, I just recently updated my website, and it's uh, it's it's not even updating right now yet. It's not fully. I just updated a few days ago. Okay, all right. It's not it's not showing up correctly. Um, but if you go to um, by the time you're watching this video, the the, the website itself is going to update in the next 24 hours. So by the time you watch this video, you could you could you should be able to go to georgecow.com. And then on the, the navigation bar in, in the upper right, uh, you'll be able to click on more and then click on monthly call. And you'll be able to sign up for, um, uh, for my free monthly calls. Okay, so um, do the daily check-in is, the, is the, the next part of the commitment. And this is so important. If you don't do a daily check-in, at the very least, do a three times a week check-in, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, for example. Um, if you're doing this with your friends, please only get a couple of friends who are committed to doing either a daily check-in with you or a Monday, you know, Wednesday, Friday check-in. And by, by check-in, I simply mean doing an email. So if you're doing it with, you know, three other friends, then you could just start a an email thread with the three of them and 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 check in and I'll 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 suggest to you what to check in on at the end of this um, session I'll kind of summarize what what are some things you can check in on and by the way thank you so much for those of you who are commenting actively um, uh, on this video now if you're live and commenting the the comments will be on the right hand side of the video if you're watching the video after I've already recorded it. The comments are located below the video. And what I what I would love for you to do is to please actively comment as you watch this video. A couple reasons why. Number one is that it um, encourages me 
when there are more comments on the video. It makes me want to keep doing this and uh, do it with more gusto. And secondly, um, when you when there are more comments on the video, the search engine optimization for this video is more um, optimized, which means that more people are likely to find this video on YouTube or on Google, and that would that would really help me to get the word out about uh, this content and this program. So thank you so much for your for your comments. Okay, and uh, the last thing is engage in the forum. Now, actually, I'm um, uh, I'm going to put this in parentheses because those who are in the private coaching program, we have a private forum. Uh, those who are watching this live, what I mean is simply comment below the video is is a forum for uh, those who are watching the video to help each other and to encourage each other. So, if you have any um, ideas that come to you as you're watching this video, any ideas that come to you, uh, go ahead and comment below if it's related. Or another thing to comment below is whenever you hear me say something that is interesting and that is useful for you, that's encouraging for you, please summarize what you just heard in just even a couple of words. Um, as you do that as, as in a comment, um, Others who are watching it will, you know, it'll remind them of what was said in, during this video, and it, become, it can become kind of like collaborative note taking uh, after a little while. Um, okay, so finally, the values of, of this community that that really we're creating here with this series. Uh, you know, my my opinion, <laughs> my hope is that the values of this community will be openness, supportiveness, and love. And let me just share what what I mean by that. Openness meaning you really are open to learning. Uh, whatever is shared in these series, you're really open to the ideas to say, hey, maybe maybe I can try this to see if it works. Um, you're also open to other people sharing. Uh, please don't ever say, well, that person's sharing is not, you know, that you know they're wrong or whatever. No, we're open to other people's ideas. Okay, and open to your own ideas too. If any ideas come to you as you're watching this, be open to what you might say intuition is suggesting to you. Okay. The second value is supportiveness, and this is particularly both supportiveness for yourself, but also supportiveness for others. So as you are transforming yourself through this program, okay, I'm going to be suggesting practices to you. I'm going to be suggesting um, certain things, certain metrics for you to track. Be supportive of yourself as you change, because change happens gradually. So be always, always be supportive of yourself. Don't ever blame yourself. Oh, I'm not changing fast enough. Oh, I failed today. No, always say, hey, I failed today or I failed this afternoon. But failure means I can learn something from it. So I'm going to be supportive of myself and ask, hey, what, what can I learn that I can do differently this evening or what I can do differently tomorrow morning? Okay? And same thing with other people. If you find someone else sharing in the forum uh, that they, they feel bad that they didn't do something or they, they didn't practice something, be supportive of them. Say, hey, you know what? What can you learn from it? And know that change happens gradually and that we are all here for you. Okay, supportiveness is really important. And finally, love. I think I just put that word love in because um, I think it, it represents both openness and supportiveness, and it's just a nice way to end the value statement, okay? <laughs> openness, supportiveness, and love. And thank you so much for those of you who are commenting on just kind of reiterating these values and how it's helpful for you in the comment section. Thank you so much. So let's go on. So what we're going to cover today is the principle of awareness. So before you can be joyfully productive, the very first thing, really, is you need to practice awareness. Practice awareness of yourself. Well, what do you be aware of? You be aware of four things is what I'm going to be suggesting to you. Be aware of where your time is going. Okay, what you what are you, you know, where is your time going? And what are you scheduling with your time? Okay. And when are you going to do certain things? So sort of awareness of time. Okay. Be, be aware of time. Uh, because here's the thing, now, I know I know that a lot of us are on a particular spiritual path. You know, all of us are are on different spiritual paths, and some spiritual paths say that hey, you know, eternity is the reality. The reality is that all is one, which means that past, present, future, there, it's all one. So there's only now, right? Now that is true. That's absolutely true. On the other hand, my belief is that we have incarnated into this life to experience linear time and to learn from it. So it's not, you know, my suggestion to you, and just my, it's just only my suggestion, is not to confuse eternity 
and the oneness of past, present, future with the learning from linear time. You and I can learn from the fact that we can use linear time as a measurement for how we are acting, how we are growing, and how we are learning from the past and how we can plan for the future. So be aware, be conscious of linear time and what you can learn from it and how you can utilize linear time to bless the world and to further your own growth. Okay? Okay. Second type of awareness is activities. Be aware of what you are doing within linear time. Okay, be aware of, you know, even every, every several times a day, just kind of check in presently, hey, what am I doing right now? And is this activity helpful? Is this what I plan to do? Is this most supportive? Okay. The other thing to be aware of is information, uh, particularly where you put information. I have gotten to a point where I pretty much know what, where I put every piece of information that comes to me. Someone suggests an idea to me. Okay, I know where I'm going to put it. Uh, I see a link online onto an article that I want to read. I know where to put it. I don't feel pressured to have to read it right now or keep my tab open so that I don't lose that article. I'm going to be teaching that to you, and I hope that you will try practicing that so you'll feel so calm throughout the day because all the information coming to you, you'll know where to put it. Okay? And finally, aware, we're going to be practicing awareness of thoughts, emotions, your thought life, basically. Your thoughts are what uh, bring forth certain emotions. Now, those things are actually separate, what's interesting. Sometimes you feel emotions, but it's because you haven't been aware of what thoughts have been going through your mind that have been causing that emotion. Some, some thoughts are so subtle to you. So being, a, being aware of thoughts, more and more aware of what thoughts are going through your head because those will um, create uh, certain emotions. Okay? Ready to go? Let's go on to the first awareness, which is time. Let's go on here. So you can see here. You're going to see at the bottom of most of these slides um, what, uh, what, we're, what principle we're talking about, what part of the principle, and kind of what, what that part of the principle is about. Okay? So first, first um, principle is awareness of time. And these are, this is a practice that I want to encourage you to do. And I try to do this actually as often as I can, especially during my working days, is to track my time. Okay, so track your time. Now I know that if you're watching this video, you cannot click on these links, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these links in the description area of the video. So below the video, when you, when you read the description area, you can click on see more or read more, and then I'll put all the links in the um, description area. And uh, if you get a link to the slideshow, which I'll also put in the description area later um, after I record this, you'll also be able to come to the slideshow and actually click on these links. So why is it important to track your time? Now, what I'm not saying is that you track your time every day for the rest of your life. But what I am encouraging you to do is at least several weeks of every year, at least, you track your time every working day. And what I mean by tracking your time is literally, you know, starting from the beginning of the day, you say, okay, what am I doing right now? Okay, how long did I do it for? Or you might even say, I want to do it for this long, and let me see how long I do it for. Okay? So, for example, if I track my time from the very beginning of the day, I would say, uh, I would wake up, and I would say, all right, I'm doing my morning hygiene. So I would say morning, I would write down morning hygiene. And then after I finish my morning hygiene, I'll say, all right, the time is now this, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm preparing breakfast now. I can prepare breakfast. After I prepare breakfast, the time is now this. I'm going to be eating my breakfast and doing my morning uh, morning checklist, you know, which includes things like looking at my calendar, you know, processing just really quickly my email for the day, that kind of stuff. Track your time. And there are a couple of tools I want to recommend to you. In fact, I was just doing some more. The, the, the tool that I have been using and loving is called A Time Logger. And you can go to atimelogger.com. Now, Atime Logger currently, as of this recording, is only available for iPhone and iPad. Um, I, he, he is the, the, pr the programmer is actually putting together a, an Android version, but it's very beta right now. So you can go to atimelogger.com to see what the what the latest and look at this blog to see what the latest update is for the beta version. If you don't have an iPhone, if you don't have an Android phone, then what you can do is use go to toggle.com, t-o-g-g-l.com. T-O-G-G-L.com is something you can use on both the computer 
and um, a mobile device. I, I just discovered this today, and it looks pretty cool. I haven't used it, so I don't really know, but uh, it came out uh, came to up on the very very top of a Google search, so I know that lots of people are linking to it. You know, another one is formassembly.com/time-tracker. Just like you see here, formassembly.com slash time dash tracker is another one, but I think that's just for computer only. And finally, you can do this just on a piece of paper. So if you want to carry like a like a like a notepad uh, with you or like a sticky notepad with you, like a smaller one, carry that along with a pencil or pen with you all day long. You can put it in your pocket, you put it in your purse if you're traveling, uh, going somewhere, and just any time you remember, pull it out and say, what am I doing right now? What's the time? What am I doing right now? Okay. And what this does? Let me uh, let me tell you why this is so so important to to practice tracking your time, even just a couple weeks in a year. When you start tracking your time, it's not so much that you track it perfectly. That's not the point. Okay. Again, the point is not to track your time perfectly. The point is that when you start tracking your time, even imperfectly, you start developing the muscle of your time awareness. Let me say this again. The purpose of tracking your time, now, there's an advanced purpose of tracking your time, which is actually to see where your time goes and then to, to plan your day more intelligently, okay? That's a more advanced purpose. But the basic purpose of tracking your time, no matter how bad you are at tracking it, is you practice the muscle of time awareness. Remember that, okay? Now, another practice is to remind yourself to track your time, okay? And you can remind yourself, if you use a time logger, it has a reminder function that you can set to beep you every half an hour, every hour, whatever you want to set it at. It'll beep you to say, hey, are you doing this right now like you have tracked it? Okay, it'll remind you basically to track your time. On the, on the computer, um, on the Google, you can search hourly reminder windows. If you have a Windows computer on a Mac, you can search Google search hourly reminder Mac and there are computer reminders that remind you basically every hour or something to, to say what are you doing right now okay now something that's interesting is I encourage you to include distractions in your time tracking so don't just track your most glorious noble activities also and plus your, your time tracking is not shared by anyone except yourself you're not tracking this for the world you're tracking this for yourself so include your distractions, whatever your distractions are, watching videos, researching the internet, you know, surfing Facebook, track that too. Because again, the purpose of tracking your time is practicing the muscle of time awareness. Okay? And a, a more advanced purpose is if you use things like a time logger or toggle or whatever um, tools like that, you can actually give you reports on where your time went. Now that's a more advanced purpose. We could talk about that in our Q&A calls if you're interested. Okay, let's go on to the second part of time awareness, which I call time-based buckets. This is the awareness that you don't have to do everything now. <laughs> now, that might sound funny, but the truth of your brain and my brain is that when we get an email, for example, we think we have to respond to that email now or we have to read that email now. I'm using email as an example because that's something that all of us have to deal with. Okay? You don't have to read or respond to an email now or even today. Therefore, you don't have to keep it in your inbox. What I recommend that you do, okay, which is what I've done and I've given you suggestions here, is to set up email folders Set up an email folder called 1.0 space tomorrow. Set up another email folder called 1.1 space Monday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Also set up additional email folders called 2.01 space January, 2.02 space February, et cetera, et cetera. So what that does is when you get an email, when you're processing your email, okay, and you, you see an email that you say, you know, that's an interesting idea. I might want to consider this, uh, but I don't have to, I don't have to consider it today, right? I don't, I can consider it. Um, you know, let's say today is Tuesday. I don't have to consider it again until Friday. Put that email in the Friday folder, in the 1.5 Friday folder, so that's out of your inbox. Okay? Then when Friday rolls around, you can go to your 1.5 Friday folder and process those emails. And the beautiful thing about this is when you get an email but you don't 
you, and you kind of glance at it first and you know it's not urgent and important but you want to think about it some other day, when you look at it again some other day, guess what? You've gotten some perspective just because distance creates perspective. Remember this. Distance creates perspective. Okay? Um, oh, by the way, those of you who are watching this video live as I'm recording it, if you don't see the comments updating, you may need to refresh your um, refresh that that comments page. Uh, do a Control R, Command R, or click the refresh button to see all the recent comments. I just did that and saw wonderful comments from you know Shronagati and Tomar and Diane and. Uh, those uh, and Tammy uh, are, are commenting very actively. Jyoti as well. Thank you so much. And uh, so, uh, but those who are watching the video, <laughs> just after after I've recorded it, you you know the comments should uh, actually the comments might there might be real time comments you're missing, so you can refresh you every every couple minutes if you want. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Um, so this is an example of, of not having to do everything now. Another example is when you get an idea that you want to do, you don't have to do it now. You can put it on, you can put it in your calendar. This is time-based buckets. It's basically another way of looking at it. It's your calendar is a time-based bucket. Okay, your calendar itself is a time-based bucket, a, a series of time-based buckets. If you get an idea. But you say, you know, I don't have to do it today. I don't have to do everything today. I'm going to revisit this idea again on Friday. You can put that idea on your calendar for Friday. Say, think about this idea again. Okay, think about what the next step for this idea is. That's called putting it in a time-based bucket. Okay? Okay, let's go on now. Again, I, I'm happy to cover more during Q&A call, but I do want to just kind of get the foundation of the information. Is And the other thing I want to encourage you is, I'm not asking you to do every practice that I share with you. Think of these sessions as like a buffet menu, like a buffet, and you just take the, the dishes that are most attractive to you and you just consume and be, be, uh, be nourished by those dishes. So at the end of the session, I'm going to ask you just to pick one practice you're going to do from, from the session and pick one project you're going to do or pick one metric you're going to track. Okay, So these are all just ideas for you to think which ones uh, you wanted to do, okay? Let's go on to the next one, which is the second awareness practice, which is activities. Just being aware of what you are doing and how you can do it more efficiently. And one way to be more aware of your activities is to think about how you can batch what you're currently doing. How you can batch what you're currently doing. Here's what I mean. Every time you switch an activity, you are losing, you are draining energy and you're draining focus. For example, if I'm processing my email and suddenly I get a ping on Facebook that someone commented on something I wrote and I switch over to Facebook and start looking at Facebook, guess what? I have just lost some energy, lost some focus. I've lost some momentum. It's kind of like every time you drive a car, you suddenly turn another, another direction and then turn back to the original direction. You're losing, guess what, you're losing some tires every time you're doing that. You're also losing your own energy by turning. Do you see what I mean? Every time you switch an activity, you are losing momentum, you're losing focus, and you're losing energy. So the ideal thing is to keep doing the same activity as long as you can until you lose the energy of doing it, until you lose, um, until you're done with it, or until you, you know, you're, you're kind of really, really tired of doing that thing. And then go on. Don't keep switching things every five minutes or every 15 minutes. You can typically do something for at least 15 minutes. Okay? Some of us can do it for 45 minutes. Or some of us can do it for even longer. Okay? Batch your activity. So, uh, for example, I have a set time twice every day to respond to email. I don't res uh, okay, I, I should say I actually look at my email throughout the day Okay, I look at my email maybe two, three minutes every hour, but I don't try to get my inbox to zero every hour. I get my inbox to zero once a day. My morning, my morning email processing is just looking at what is urgent and important that I really need to respond to before I go on with my day. Let me suggest to you, get if you're going, if you're practicing inbox zero, if you're getting your email down to zero on a regular basis or every day, do that at the end of your day. 
because at the end of your day you have more motivation to end your day. Do you see what I mean? You have motivation to end your day and so you'll be more efficient getting your email to zero at the end of the day. If you try to get your email to zero at the beginning of the day, you'll do it too you'll, you'll do it way too long. Use your natural motivation. So batch your email response once or twice a day that you're processing and getting it to zero. Feel free to check your email throughout the day, but just for anything urgent and important. Okay. Um, another one, uh, another example. If you have, if you're working on project X, let's say you're working on a particular project. Every time an idea comes to you for project X, do you stop whatever you're doing and then work on project X again? That's very inefficient. What what do you do instead? Create a document on your computer or, or open up a notebook, call it Project X, and every time an idea comes to you for Project X, don't just go, let me stop what I'm doing and work on Project X. No, you write that idea in the Project X notebook or the Project X document so that the next time you, you are working on Project X in a batched way, you pull out the Project X notebook or pull, up, pull open the Project X document and those are all your ideas there. Okay. Same thing for your social media notification. Do you check your e Facebook notifications every moment and every day? Oh, let me let me show you an example. When I go to Facebook, look at this. I have 67 notifications. Why is that? It's because I don't check every you know five times a day what this notification is. I check maybe a couple times a week, so I can go through them real quickly. You see what I mean? That's another way of batching it as, as an example. Another way, if you if you log your your spending receipts, do it you know once a week instead of logging it every day. It saves time. You know, another one, another thing, when you want to talk with someone about something and you have a let's say you have a regular meeting with a teammate, every time you have an idea, do you shoot an email off to them? Well, you could, but it might bother them too. Or do you call them up every time you have an idea? No, create a document called Agenda with Tim or you know, whoever your teammate is. Agenda with Brenda. You know. And then put that idea for in the agenda document with Brenda. And then when you comes to your weekly meeting, say, "Hey, Brenda, I have, I have these five things I want to talk with you about." And again, distance creates perspective. So when you when it comes to that meeting, you're looking at the agenda document. You go, "Hmm, actually, items two and three are no longer relevant. I figured it out myself." Or, you see what I mean? Very helpful to batch things. Let's go on to the next one. Um, another thing about awareness of activities: whenever you feel like being distracted. Write that idea on your on some kind of a notepad, which you empty every day. What I mean is, at the end of your day, part of your end of day routine should include empty your scratch pad or, or notepad ideas. And how do you empty it? Whatever ideas are there, you put it into the appropriate project document. You put, you see what I mean? Batch everything, or you schedule into your calendar to say, think about this idea on Friday or next Wednesday or whatever, and then get back to your schedule. So that's how I do my day. Is I have a schedule for my day on what I, I'm going to I'm going to work on. For example, this lecture. I'm going to work on this lecture from three to four. If other ideas come, I'm not going to drop the working on this lecture and do other things. I'm going to write it down on my notepad and get back to working on this lecture. You see what I mean? Okay. Let's go on. Third awareness is awareness of information. By the way, we're almost done with the ideas. Very simple. Awareness of information. Okay, and here on this slide, now you can pause this video if you want to get a good read on the slide. Yeah, that's a great thing about having this video, right? Um, but let me just kind of talk you through it very briefly and then you can pause it later if you want. Smart information management is to have a place for everything in your life. Even if the place is simply someday maybe, I'll think about this. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna ignore right now. Because if the universe wants to get your attention about an idea, I have found, and that might maybe may or may not be true for you, but I have found the universe, if it wants to get attention, my attention on something, it'll send me that idea in at least three ways. This person will email me about this idea uh, or this thing that I, I should attend. Uh, someone else will email me or uh, say, hey, George, you check this idea out or attend this event or whatever. You know, I'll tend to get it more than once. I'll get, tend to get it three times or more. Same thing. So, but let, 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 let's look at what kind of buckets. If something comes to you and it's important, again, that's the key word, important, okay? Any important information should be placed in a project bucket, okay? Again, something is important 
based on your own metric, based on your own criteria, do you think something's important just because you heard about it once? Well, it may be if your whole being and spirit says, yes, that's what, what's such a great idea. If your being is telling you, oh my God, that's, that's something I have to write down, then that's, a, that's important. Usually, though, I, I wait until something gets my attention more than once, usually three times or more. Then it's important. Then it uh, merits putting into one of the project buckets. And each project bucket should be uh, connected to its time slot. Okay, actually, I'm going I'm to put that uh, at the end of the slide here. Those of you looking at the updated slide will... Um, okay. So, uh, what do I mean by a project, project bucket? Okay. Okay. Contact information. Okay, I mean, this is a very simple example. Whenever someone gives you a new phone number, do you, do you just write it down on a notepad and go, hopefully I'll remember this phone number in the future? Well, some of us do that, and that's not a very efficient way. When someone gives you a phone number and it's someone that you want to contact again, what do you do? You go to their contact, you go to your address book and update the phone number. That's an example of a project bucket for that person. You see what I mean? Someone or someone tells you what their birthday is, do you just kind of write it down some random mobile? I hope I remember this important person's birthday. No. You go to your go to your calendar actually. You might want to put it on your calendar that person's birthday. Or you go to your contact information. No, okay, let's say someone tells you what their kids' names are. Again, if it's an important business contact or a personal contact, you may want to um, put it in where their contact information is. Do you see what I mean? Agenda documents, same thing. Next time you talk to someone, you know, do you have ideas written down? Okay. Email templates. When you when you find yourself sending the same email again and again and again, it's a good idea to just copy and paste that thing into an email template document. Every time you have to respond to that email with a similar response, you just go and copy that. So you might have a folder on your computer called email templates. And every time you're processing your email, open your email templates folder. You see, simple, but it's smart. Project documents. So for example, Every time I work on the Joyful Productivity program, or every time I get an, get an idea about the Joyful Productivity module, do you think I just randomly put it on a notepad and throw it away somewhere, and one day I hope I remember, you know, I put on some notepads, some ideas? No. Here's what I do. I have a draft. I have a draft slideshow where I throw all my random, my, I'm just showing you this. This is a draft for Joyful Productivity series. And if I have some random ideas, I'll just kind of throw it in here and I'll develop it over time. Whenever I'm working on my draw for productivity program, I'll go to my draft module and I'll keep making some progress on it. Just a little bit of progress every time I work on the module, okay? Or a lot of progress if I can make it. You see what I mean? So I have a project document. For me, it's a slideshow. That's my project document. For you, it might be an actual document or it might be a folder or whatever it is, okay? Now, uh, by the way, I saw a comment about contact information. What do I do? I, I put it in uh, Google Contacts. That's a very useful tool. Google, you can just go to google.com, I think, slash contacts, okay? And then you sign in and you see your Google Contacts. And your Google Contacts will be, um, will be uh, basically synced to your Gmail. It'll be synced to your Google Calendar. If, if you have Google Voice, which I use, which is a Google phone line, it's synced to your Google Voice as well. It's all synced. It's called Google Contacts. That's what I love using. You can also export it to an Excel if you need to. So that's what I do. Anyway, Quadrant 2, those of you who are familiar with time management may have heard of Quadrant 2. This is reference, referencing what Stephen Covey made popular. Quadrant 2 represents important but not urgent. So I have some time scheduled on my calendar called Quadrant, well, it's not really called Quadrant 2, but that's really what I meant. That's basically some time that you put on your calendar Every week, it could be an hour, it could be more than an hour, where you work on projects that are important to you but not urgent. If you don't have time set aside every week to work on projects that are important to you but not urgent, you probably will never work on those projects because it's not urgent. You see what I mean? So have a Quadrant 2 task list that you call you know, Quadrant 2 document. You put your Quadrant 2 ideas on there every time you work on, every time Quadrant 2 comes around, you start working on those things. Okay, media lists. Book, do you have a document to track the books you want to read? The way I track it is I track it in goodreads.com. I think it's goodreads. 
yeah, goodreads.com is a good, good place to track books you want to read. Videos you want to watch. I have a folder on my computer. Let me see if you can see it. Yeah, videos. I have it called vids. And I basically, every time I see a YouTube video or whatever, I drag it into that vids folder. I don't, whenever you see a video you want to watch, you just watch it right then and there. Many of us do, and it's a terrible switch of activity because you start getting lost in watching videos. No! Whenever you get a video, you want to watch someone email something to you, you want to, you know, you feel like you want to watch it, you see something on Facebook, you go, to, you put that video in your folder called videos, and that's, maybe you want to watch it over dinner. Maybe you have, every single time you eat dinner, you, you go to your videos folder and you watch, you watch the next video, or watch whatever video interests you, you see. Articles you want to read, same thing. I have a learning folder. I put all my articles that I want to read into. I have tons of stuff. Tons. It just goes on and on, but it doesn't matter. My learning time is during my lunch time. I eat lunch alone because I work from home. So during my lunch, I go to my learning folder and I read an article or watch a video or make some progress on a course that I bought. You see what I mean? Same thing with audios I want to hear. I listen to my audios during my afternoon walk. I take an afternoon walk Monday through Fridays, and that's where I load you know audios I want to hear onto my you know, podcast, uh, iPod or whatever iPhone I have. But for you, it might be iPod or whatever MP3 player, and that's when I start chipping away at the audios I want to hear. Monthly review, quarterly review, yearly review. This is a document you keep for yourself to say every month, at the beginning of every month, I want to I want to think about certain things. I want to review my life purpose, for example, or I want to. Think about the, the three major projects I'm working on in my business and how each one is going and what the next step is. You know, so you might want to do a monthly, quarterly, yearly review. If you don't want to put something in a bucket, it's not important enough for you. So if you, if you found some idea and you don't know where to put it, if you can't think of what project document to put it in, it's not enough. It's, and if you don't think it's important enough to put it in your calendar to think about next Friday, it's not important enough for you. You might even want to, if you can't bear not to put ideas everywhere, okay, you might want to create a digital document called Someday Maybe and put random ideas in the Someday Maybe document because you can always search it. If it's a computer document, you can do a control F on that document to find a particular word in that long, long document. If you put it on the notebook, you can't search a physical notebook. You have to read everything or glance at everything. Now, here's the important part uh, that I want to share before we go on. Each project, each project bucket should be connected to a time slot in your calendar. Here's what I mean. If I have three projects that I'm working on in my, in my work, and each one has a project document, and I'm throwing ideas in that project document, if I don't have time set aside in my calendar to work on all three projects, guess what? Those three projects aren't going to get done. So I may have, like, let's say Tuesday. Um, I'm going to quickly show you. I, I don't want to freak you out with my calendar, okay? But let's just say every Tuesday afternoon, I prepare for this uh, series, okay? From 3 to 4, I prepare for this series. If I don't have a calendar appointment set for myself to prepare for the series, guess what's going to happen? The time that I set for this series is going to come around and have, I'll have nothing prepared. So my every project document, okay, every project, I have some time slot in my calendar Maybe it's just one hour a week. Maybe it's three hours a week. Set time, regularly occurring in your calendar for each of your important projects. And then when that project time comes around, you open that project document and you make some progress. You don't have to do the whole project. You just make some progress. Okay? All right, let's go on. Finally, the fourth type of awareness is thoughts and emotions. And I just want to encourage you very simply to practice throughout the day check in. And throughout the day, it could be every time you hear your clock chime, maybe you have an hourly clock that chimes, or maybe you set up an, a, a, a computer reminder that chimes every, every hour or something like that. Throughout the day, check in. How is your thought life? How are your... And you can know how your thought life is by checking your emotions. How are you feeling? Are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling tight? Or are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling uh, frustrated? That's your thought life. That's the thoughts that you haven't been corralling and you haven't been controlling. Okay? And, um, and gently return to love. Gently return to love. In fact, um, there's a Facebook status update that I made recently. I'm just going to show it to you real quick. I know I made it quite recently. Um, okay. 
here, here it is. If we understood the power of our thoughts, we would guard them more closely. If we under and this is this is being written by someone who had a profound Betty Eady had a profound near-death experience that brought her. I mean, if you believe it, okay, I, I happen to believe in this kind of stuff, but you could just say she had a profound philosophical experience. But she it brought her to a spiritual realm where she was able to see the thoughts that people were having. Like thoughts that people were having were kind of like light beams coming out of their head, or or if it's bad thoughts, it was like goo, it was like slime coming out of their heads and affecting the environment, the thought environment around them. If it's positive thoughts, it was like light beams blessing the environment around them. It was slime, it was negative thoughts, it was like slime, goo, ooze coming out of their you know, mind, brain and affecting, infecting the, the... So she wrote, if you, if we understood the power of our thoughts, we would guard them much more closely. If we understood the awesome power of our words, which even even greater than our thoughts, the words that come out of our mouths, Spiritually, energetically, it's like either blessing of light or like dark ooze slime that's you know infecting the people around us and even infecting the invisible spirits around us, okay, and drawing either positive or negative spirits to us. Okay, again, this is you can see what my beliefs are. It's, it, but if you're if you don't believe in that kind of stuff, just say that thoughts and words you have will powerfully shape your neural pathways. Okay, that's another way of saying it. If we understood the awesome power of words, we would prefer silence to almost anything negative. In our thoughts and words, we create our weakness or our strengths. So therefore, our limitations and joys begin in our hearts. Okay? Remember that. Throughout the day, check in and gently return to loving thoughts. For me, what are loving thoughts? I basically have four types of thoughts that I do throughout the day. Gratitude, trust, Excellence and joy. So gratitude is very simple. I give thanks. It's something small. Whatever is around me, I can give thanks for. You know, I thank, I, I give thanks for this computer that allows me to communicate with you, with the world. I give thanks to, you know, uh, the floor that is stable. I don't have a, I don't have floors with holes. I'm so lucky to live in a house where I can walk safely without falling into holes. Some people don't in this world. You see what I mean? I mean, literally, give thanks to whatever is around you, as many as you can, and you return to a place, oh my God, I'm so lucky. Gratitude. Trust is, uh, my personal belief, and I'll talk about this in one of the future sessions, is that um, the future for every single one of us is secure. This life is an adventure in the context of eternal perfect security. I'll talk about that later, but trust. Therefore, you can trust whatever is happening to you is going to be, it's going to turn out amazingly well. And if it's not turning out amazingly well, it's not yet finished uh, completing its process yet. But it's going to turn out amazingly well forever. So trust. Okay. Excellence and joy. I basically try to approach everything I do like a performer. I, I, I invite you to think about this. Everything you do, no matter how boring it is, when I'm doing something boring, I was doing, I was, I was, I, I filed a tax extension, so my taxes are due in October. I was doing some taxes this weekend. It was so boring to me because I had to do, I do my own bookkeeping. It was so boring, but I remember being a performer and being a craftsman in my work. So as I'm doing bookkeeping, checking this spreadsheet with that spreadsheet, I go, how, how can I do this with as much elegance and with as much joy as possible, like a, like a performance, okay, like a performance. Throughout the day, check in. And gently return to love. So, as a summary of where we're, we are today, we talked about various practices and pr the principle of awareness, powerful practices that if you if you apply them, I believe will change your life. Next week, we're going to talk about simplicities and priorities, and then the week after that, we'll talk about priorities and balance, and then balance and commitment. As a reminder, the vision of this program is to is to get you to a, a place of deeper joy and greater productivity. And please commit. If you really want that kind of change in your life, you've got to commit with following through this program, which again is, is you know, doing the following things. Right? And then the values again. As you engage in the forum, remember openness, supportiveness for yourself and for others and, and love. And finally, here's what I recommend. Uh, implementing and tracking. Okay, what's, here's what I recommend. Um, this is your, you could, you could think of it as your homework, but I think of it as implementation. Basically, if you actually want to uh, get results from this program, 
it's probably not enough just to watch the videos. You've got to implement. So here are the th here are the three things I recommend you implement. So I I, I want to I, I encourage you to pick one project this week to, to complete. Okay, and just please only pick one of of the following three or whatever other project you saw in the slideshow. Just pick one because here's the thing: these videos are uploaded to YouTube and will be available for you as long as YouTube is around. And I mean, as long as I keep these videos up, I intend to keep them up for a long time. So rather than trying to implement many things at the same time, okay, this is important, because please, please listen up. Instead of trying to implement many things at the same time, please only implement one thing per category, okay? Because growth happens, gra sustainable growth happens gradually. So you're setting yourself up for more success if you do it more gradually, more gradually, more gradually, okay? So just decide on one of these projects complete a week. Just you're setting up yourself for more success. So either decide one activity you can batch and plan when you're going to do that batched activity or set up your time-based buckets or assign, set up your information buckets based on all the slides I've, I've given you. The metric to track this week, okay, and, and by tracking, I mean you track it yourself, but also check in. What I mean by checking in daily is with your accountability team. Uh, if you're in our private coaching program, you, you've been assigned an accountability team. Uh, if you're doing this with your friends, you assign yourself an accountability team. So check, so check in with them by email every day, okay? So pick one of the things to track. Either how many hours you time tracked the previous day, so how many hours you, you track your time, um, how many times you, you found yourself distracted by some idea or interesting link or whatever and then brought yourself to the present task. That's something to track too. That's a very cool thing to track because every time you track something, you are practicing the muscle of being more aware of that thing in the future. And by the way, my cat is, uh, my cats are with me in this room so you might hear them. Um, <laughs> third thing you might track is whether um, you did your batching the previous day. Whether you did your, because if you're going to batch activities, you know, assuming you are, did you do your batch thing the previous day or did you do your thing all throughout the day, okay? The other thing to, as part of your daily check-in is your thought life. So as part of your daily check-in, notice, now, I, I think all of us probably have at least some negative thoughts throughout the days. If, if you had zero negative thoughts at all throughout your entire day, you would be floating around, I mean, literally on the clouds. You wouldn't even be human anymore, okay? All of us, part of this life's purpose is purifying our mind, purifying our mind all the time, despite all the environment around us. So you, true, I, I really believe, I mean, you, you know, even if you think you're so pure and positive, you do have some negative thoughts that are somehow hindering you from being totally feeling love and confidence throughout your day, okay? So share what is, notice what the negative thoughts are because if you do your daily check-in, what does that mean? That means you're practicing the muscle of tracking your thought life. If you, if, and, and you'll start to notice, okay, hey, I just had this negative thought. Write that down because then you can check in with your, with your friends you know, the next day, right? So share one negative belief or thought, okay, that hindered you the previous day, if any. Um, and then besides doing that, also share what's one thought that could that could counter that, okay? That could bring you back to love and empowerment. Make sense? Okay. So finally, um, oh by the way, you can't see the slide um, because it's it's meant to be shown on a dark background. I, I should change that in the future. But I have a three question survey that I really really appreciate that you take. Uh, it really means a lot to me when you take my feedback survey because I have no idea really how I'm doing until or if I'm really serving you until you tell me. So please, please, um, once you get the slide share link, please click on the link and I'll also put the session uh, feedback link in, um, in, in below the video. Thank you for being part of the series. I'm so glad to have you as part of this larger community. Uh, thank you for all of your comments that you're making below. I so appreciate them. And I look forward to being with you in our next session or on a Q&A call coming up. Blessings to you. I'll talk with you in the next part.